Welcome to the Postpartum Coach Podcast, where we embrace our needs as moms, we learn to lead ourselves first, then our families, and where we create our own healing from the inside out to find our way to the work we were meant to do in this world. I'm your host, a fellow mom of three and a certified life coach, Lizzie Langston. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Oh my goodness, my poor little voice. As you can hear, my voice sounds a little bit different today. (laughs) I've been nursing my son back to health, and then my daughter got what he has, and now I have it. Gratefully, a lot lighter version. So anyway, he gets bronchiolitis about once a year, and um, living in Arizona doesn't help it because it's dusty and dry here. So We are on it though, getting it taken care of little by little, but it's been a little rough over here as my voice denotes for you. So even though I'm a little under the weather, I still wanted to show up for you guys on the podcast this week. I actually feel pretty good. If that changes, if that wasn't the case, I probably wouldn't be sitting here, but I feel pretty good. My voice is just a little groggy. Um, So I wanted to talk about something today that I learned firsthand this week. And it changed my life. Um, I've I've known about shame, which is what we're going to talk about. I've known about depression and the role that shame and depression play. But I hadn't experienced it in this way before. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit more about previous experiences with depression and shame and what I experienced this week. Before I dive in, I just want to ask you guys to leave a review on the podcast. If you use this podcast, if you love it, if you listen to it, if you just found it, all of the above, we really could use your reviews. And I'm super grateful whenever you guys leave one, I have a bunch from about a year ago. And then I have like, just a, just like a little handful from more recently. So I would love some more reviews from this year now that we're in a new year. So if you don't mind, just go to Apple Podcasts. I would be so grateful. That just helps people find this amazing resource and helps me out as well in my business. So yeah, leave me a review, a written review with some stars. That'd be awesome. Um, Last note of business before we dive in today. Uh, My group starts on Monday, March 14th, which is in just a few days. So today is Thursday, March 10th. We are in the year 2022 (laughs) for those listening later. Um, So in just a handful of days, my group starts and I honestly don't know if I'll be doing this group again or not. I don't know if I will be offering group coaching again. So as my life and business progress, I, I can never guarantee that. And so if you've been wanting my help with postpartum, this could be your last chance. I don't know if that's forever. And I don't know if that's true. I'm not trying to scare anyone. I just genuinely don't know. This year has produced a lot of like shifting in me and I'm feeling led and guided. Um, and I just, I can't tell you what will come after this group. So, um, please join if, if you want my help with postpartum anxiety, depression, birth trauma, if you've ever felt like you've wanted to work with me, in the mental health space, if you want to learn with me, um, even if you're a provider yourself of some sort, if you've just felt drawn to me, like I said, this could be your last chance in this capacity. So definitely join us. Here's how you can join that group. There's two ways. You can come to the free call that's tonight. It's going to be at eight o'clock PM mountain standard time. So literally 12 hours from the moment I'm recording this and you can register for that at the link in my Instagram bio. So I'm just at Lizzie Langston. If you click the link in my bio and go down to the very last green button, it says register for the group coaching call info call. So there's where you can register. It's a zoom call. You'll get an email with a link and come chat with us. So at eight o'clock tonight, we're going to be, as long as I don't feel like crud, we're going to be talking about, um, birth trauma, anxiety, uh, trauma in general, depression, and also most importantly, the 12 week program, how you can join information about that. The other thing you can do if you're interested in the group, I don't know how many spots are left, but you can try booking a free consult with me. You can go to lizzielangston.com forward slash consult. And I have 30 minutes slots open, 30 minute spots open for you guys. 
If you have any questions and you want to just talk to me about this group, you want to tell me what's been going on for you and we can talk a little bit more about you and your needs and the group. Um, those are limited. So if you want to join us starting Monday, you better hop in and get, get one of those. If there's no spots that work for you, just email me or come to the info call. My email is just Lizzie at Lizzie Langston.com. I have thought about possibly opening a few more spots, either Friday night or Saturday morning for those who might be interested. So we can make a way for you, but you got to act now. So get in there if that's something you're interested in. All right. Last but not least, we're going to read a review and then we will dive into shame. Shame is so, so important to understand you guys. It almost took me down. Shame is different from depression. And if you're not aware of the role that shame is playing when you're dealing with mental health stuff, you are at a supreme disadvantage and you are at a risk to shame. Shame can be very dangerous. So please tune in and listen to this episode. I'm going to read a review from Advocate BLM 25. It's a five-star review. She said, so thankful for this podcast. My baby just turned eight months old, and I originally found this podcast by searching for terms like postpartum weight loss and came across Lizzie's podcast episode that taught me about how it's so much more than diet and exercise, but a mindset and a space I need to be in. I took so much from that episode and subscribed right after and have since learned that I have been dealing with postpartum anxiety without knowing that's what it was. I recognized feelings and thought processes I've never experienced or dealt with before, but it was this podcast that helped me realize realize that I was suffering from postpartum anxiety and that I'm not a crazy first time mom worrying over quote, silly things that would never happen unquote, as I was told by friends and family dot, dot, dot. This podcast has been a safe space and resource for me on my morning drives to work. And I am just so thankful for it. Thank you so much, Advocate BLM25, for sharing that. Um, I also have had friends and family, like in a very well meaning way, tell me things that were super not helpful. (laughs) I see a pattern there. I hear about that a lot. So it's going to take more than talking to friends and family, typically, to figure these things out. And so if you sense that, you know, your husband and your mother-in-law and your mom and your dad and your dad, father-in-law and whoever else you got in your corner, your best friend, that even though they love you, they just don't understand or what they're telling you is not really helping. Get in the group coaching program. Don't wait. And also, you know, changing your mental health is not like a simple thing. Sometimes, sometimes it takes rerouting the way you think and reprogramming your brain and reevaluating your life and how you do life and how you advocate for yourself day to day. And so just like, you know, if you're living in an apartment and you want to live in a house, you got to save up money. You got to know how much the down payment's got to be. You got to make plans. It's like sometimes a whole year that it really takes to really shift to being a homeowner, sometimes more. Same thing with your mental health. And I hate to disappoint you (laughs) if that's not what you were hoping for. But sometimes redoing your mental health is a project that takes focus, takes money, takes reworking the budget. It takes energy and time. It takes saying no to unsolicited advice from friends and family and and passing on it and not really taking it to heart or not even listening to it, removing yourself. It Sometimes it takes totally reworking your marriage and saying, Hey, I don't actually feel safe with you when you talk to me like this, or when you respond this way, that's not safe for me. You know, there's just a ton of t- changes that kind of sometimes need to happen. So go to lizzielangston.com forward slash consult and chat with me about what changes need to take place for you. All right, let's talk about shame. So here is what happened recently. I want to give you the DL. Now that I'm not in the shame, I don't feel... <laughs> sad or shameful sharing it. There was a moment where I wanted to hide from all of this community and my Instagram and all the things, my clients even. There was a time because um, when we moved back from Costa Rica and even before we moved back, I was experiencing depression and anxiety, depressiveness. I like to say depressiveness just because it's just not so final and like not so tied to my identity. So if you ever notice me saying depressiveness, that's why it just feels a little bit more transient. Like I'm in depressiveness, but then I'm not depressive, you know? Anyway, so um, after many, many much time spent with depression. I like to use that word depressiveness. So 
here's kind of how it happened. And I want to share this because like the um, podcast review that I read said, a lot of women, a lot of you guys aren't really aware that you're actually in depressiveness or you're in anxiety postpartum because they're new. And we've, some of us have never experienced those at all before, or we've never even seen them firsthand or both. So I want to kind of walk you through how I was in depression, how I didn't know I was in depression, even though I know a lot about depression because I was just so in it. And like I said, my hope is that as I share this, some of you guys might be like, oh, that's me too. Or if it happens in a future day, you'll be able to catch it a little bit sooner. The hardest part and the most dangerous part or the most difficult part of depression is before you know that that's what you're experiencing. Now, once you know there's some other difficult parts that we're going to talk about, which is where you know, your identity, you have like an identity crisis because you don't usually identify as a depressive person and you feel all sorts of shame because your energy levels are different or your patience with your kids is different. And so there's some facilitating that we have to learn to do once we know we have depression. So there's definitely hard once you figure out that that's what you're experiencing. And the same thing goes for anxiety. So you can use depression and anxiety interchangeably. When I, when I'm saying these words, if you're more anxious than depressed, just substitute the word depression for anxiety for yourself. And frankly, any diagnosis really, but yeah, let's talk about how this happened for me. So the first thing I'll say is life just felt really hard and it was like so hard that I kept thinking like multiple times a week, I was like, this is just so difficult. Like, why is it so difficult? And then you keep going, you know? And I think a lot of that happens to postpartum. That's just our typical response as humans. Like, all right, well get back in it. Like it'll pass, you know, you keep going. Um, so that's one thing to look for is if you're just like, this just feels like it's so hard. I remember postpartum, um, waking up like, I was nursing for like 45 minutes at a time or sometimes like two or three hours of trying to nurse in the middle of the night with my brand new baby. It was my first baby. And I just like mentioned that in passing to my sister-in-law who had three or four kids at that point. And she was like, whoa, no, 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 no. She's like, when I wake up and nurse, it's like 15 minutes, maybe 15 minutes on the other side and we're done tops. And so I was like, what? So (laughs) when you start telling people, you start to find out a little bit more of what's normal and stuff. So you want to be aware of that. But yeah, if you're just like this, this cannot be right. How hard this is. That's a good sign. Um, another one is if you're just snapping a lot, you're angry, you're really emotional. Okay. Um, if you notice that you are buffering and like trying to escape life, if your days and nights kind of get mixed up because you're staying up late to binge like a show because the day was just that hard that you just need like an escape, but then you're sleeping in really late and then the morning starts off bad and all of the days just kind of blend like that. That is also depressiveness. It can be. Um, and those, that's a signal to you. If you're really like not able to go to bed at an hour that serves you, even though you know that you should, if you're like dangerously playing with staying up late because you need an escape, that dangerous, like risky kind of risky behavior could be a sign that you're teetering on the edge of like mental health struggles and you might need more support and to really gather your resources. Um, same thing with another risky behavior that kind of comes up with depression is over shopping. This is something I've talked about on the podcast and something that gratefully, I feel like I've really been able to rein that in even, even in this last batch of depressiveness, just because I have experience with seeing myself do that before. But, um, a lot of women, whether it's Amazon and like just buying a ton of stuff on Amazon or, um, going to target or whatever your, your indulgence of choices <laughs> for me, sometimes it's even just the grocery store, like buying way more than we need of food. So you, what you want it, the pattern here, whether, whether it's shopping or Netflix, the pattern is that it's risky. And really what it is, is it's a, it's a call for attention. Um, and it's also desperation. So part of the struggle in depression specifically and anxiety is you just feel so out of control and you feel so desperate for like happiness 
And so you will, even if it's kind of risky, like with the budget or it's risky with um, your health and your sleep and being able to stay up, you know, or wake up in the morning with the kids, the riskiness is there because you're just so desperate. You're pulling beyond the regular bounds of boundaries and like healthy interactions to have what you need, to get what you need emotionally. Another sort of, I would call it risky with like a lowercase r behavior. I remember um, oversharing with total strangers about like what I was going through or like over talking or like being overly social. And again, I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, if, if you're at a, if you're at a park and there's other moms and you reach out and say, Hey, how are you doing? And start a conversation. But if you're, if you're feeling like so desperate beyond normal to talk with moms, but you're either totally frozen and not able to, or you're kind of like going out of your comfort zone in weird ways to talk to people that sometimes is another indicator that you're just desperate and really struggling and you're deep, deep, low, low, low. Um, another piece of depression is like this general sense of hopelessness. Um, like I'm never going to be able to get out of this. I can't get out of this. It's basically like a sense of defeatedness to some degree. And that can be an indicator that you've been in depressiveness for a minute, for a while, and that it's finally getting to that point. Obviously, another indicator is like, again, risky behavior when when your brain wants to go to suicidal thoughts um, about harming yourself. Also though, riskiness around wanting to just like hit or punch or throw or do anything to like that to your children. So again, what we're, what we're seeing is a brain that is desperate for a change is desperate for a fix emotionally. And instead of the brain, instead of looking at itself and being like, how did I contribute to getting here or looking at the body and being like, how is my, you know, are my adrenals fatigued? Is my thyroid off of balance? Stuff like that. Is my gut, you know, not well, whatever it is, the brain is just like wanting to attack or manipulate things and circumstances around us. Okay. So hopefully that gives you a really good idea of, you know, am I depressive? Am I anxious? If you're still wondering, or if you just really find that you want to know more about what it looks like to be in postpartum anxiety or in postpartum depression, just so you know, I have a freebie. It's a, it's a free guide. It's a PDF. It's beautiful. And it'll really give you even more about what it's like in depression and anxiety, postpartum specifically. And it's all written down for you visually. So you can check that out at lizzielangston.com forward slash freebie. All right. So what do we do once we're in depression? And let's see, I want to talk about the role that shame, when shame can creep in and, and how to notice that and how to separate that from what you're going through. Because like I said, shame will take you down, sister. Shame feeds the whole beast. Shame and depression together. Ouch. Watch out. Okay. But depression without shame is a completely different experience. Very much lighter. You get through it faster. Um, not as much damage done by far, but shame will just eat you alive if you're anxious or depressive. So well, that's one of the things in my 12 week program that we really address in those first couple weeks and my, my online postpartum anxiety and depression course that we're going to be following through the 12 week program also addresses it. So you're going to be getting that help both from the videos in my course and from me on the live calls every week, but the, yeah, shame. So let me tell you how it went down for me. I'd been depressed long enough to figure out that's what it was. That's what it was happening. I had been anxious and depressive. Okay. So that, those were my flags. I figured it out. I was like, oh, okay. Now for a minute I grappled with that and I was like, whoa, the last time I was depressive was postpartum before I found coaching after my third baby. So this was unexpected. And so I had some thoughts about that. And, um, and then I just kind of kept trying to do life depressively and I got busy working on my health and looking at my adrenals because mindset work at this point, like I feel like I know a lot about it and I do it really well. And so to me, I just kind of intuitively sensed that maybe something was up in my body. So I'm in the middle of kind of figuring that out. I am feeling less depressive though. And this is where the shame part comes in. What I did is I went to a group, a group that I'm a part of, um, for my own mental health 
And I said, I'm feeling shame. And I learned about shame, which I've known about shame, but I was in it, right? Like I was like in the lie and and like really believing the shame. And so all that I did is I learned about shame and then I didn't feel shame anymore. Like I literally processed it on that call. I didn't just learn about it. Like I also had to move it through my body and process it. And we'll talk about that. And then it was like so different. I feel so much more able to take care of myself. I feel so much more able to um, work in my business. <laughs> I feel so much more able to share my story and to move through it instead of like being delved deeper, 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 deeper into the devastatingness of it all. So that's what shame can do. Shame just like allows you to move through it instead of get stuck in it. Sorry, releasing shame allows you to move through it instead of getting stuck in it. So let me, let me share with you what I learned about shame. Um, and again, there's so many episodes on this podcast that have that are on the topic of shame. So go check those out. Just sift th- through the podcast. Look for episodes on shame. There's a couple really good ones that people have told me have really helped them. And I'm going to give you a little bit more. So this piece came from Kathy Kinghorn, who is an amazing therapist. She's based in Utah, and she helps co-run this group that I'm in. And, um, she shared her, this is her, I want to give her credit because this is kind of her intellectual property, but she did share that shame and she's done like years of therapy with, you know, sex addiction and porn stuff. And, um, like she, she has been the therapist for people in that space for many years. And what she said is that shame is like a conspiracy theorist. Shame is a conspiracy theorist. Okay. So the part of you, mama, the part of you, I'm talking to you now, the part of you, that and here's what shame look, looks like by the way you need to know because you might not even realize that's what you're feeling shame says i'm not enough i'm not doing enough or i'm too much i'm just too much for people or you know like there's some defect with me i'm wrong in some way inherently and here's how my shame came up so my shame was like you're a coach on depression and anxiety. So you can't be depressed and anxious. And so I felt like this imposter syndrome for a minute. And I also felt this deep shame that made me want to hide and not share or teach or be here in any way, right? To support because I just felt like I don't deserve to coach people if I'm depressive, right? So one of your thoughts could be, I don't deserve to be their mom or they don't deserve to have a mom like me, da, 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 right? So shame basically says you either have to be like perfect or without this defect of depression or anxiety postpartum, or you can't be their mom or, or you need to like, right? Like it's basically shame does not let us hold both. Like maybe for example, with the conspiracy theorists, let's say you theorize that all farmers are bad and they're trying to kill us. And what if you're like, okay, maybe some people in the food industry genuinely don't have people's best interest at heart. Maybe there are globalists that are trying to actually depopulate through using weapons of, you know, food illnesses or viruses, but also maybe there are people who are trying to protect us and there are people somewhere in between, right? So you see how you can hold both. And that's what gives conspiracy theorists a bad rap is that they're just so into their theory. They can't even see the good too. And so same thing with shame, right? Shame is the conspiracy theorist. Shame wants you to see that because of X, Y, or Z thing, right? Because of your symptoms, you are now defected. You're not worthy to show up as a mom. You're not worthy to be the children of your mom. You're not worthy to fit into the motherhood role. And the most dangerous piece I think is you're not worthy for help. You're not worthy to share your story. You're not worthy to better the world in any way. And I just want you to hear me loud and clear today that that's not true that you are worthy even when you experience depressiveness for the first time in your life and it totally blindsides you, blindsides you. Or even if you experience depressiveness as a coach or a doula or a midwife or a therapist, I'm talking to you therapists because I've had therapists call me on consults and they're like, what is happening? I'm a therapist, (laughs) you know, or coaches all the time. What's happening? I'm a coach. You're a human too. And the duality of the human experience, if we can't hold space for that, we're going to get buried into it. It's going to suck us down into the negative. Okay. So the solution here is remember, shame is the conspiracy theorist, like Kathy Kinghorn told me, and you can hold space for both parts of you, for the depressive or the anxious part of you, or the depressive and anxious part of you, and 
for the amazing kick-ass part of you that is so good at being a mom and is so on it. And whether she homeschools or she public schools and she cooks dinners or she buys dinners, it doesn't matter. Like there are both parts of you. And I want you to see both parts of you today. And I want you to know that in my group, yes, I'm going to help you feel less depressive and anxious, but it's not going to be happening through hating yourself and hating those parts of yourself. We are going to accept the symptoms in a way that actually helps them feel lighter and helps us maneuver ourselves through them better and more effectively. That's how we beat depression and anxiety is we accept and we allow. And because we do that, we grow and we thrive and we are more resilient for it the next time it happens. And we are more shame resilient in general, which really boosts your mental health overall. So come join us. The group starts Monday, friends. Book a consult. Um, Come to the free call tonight at 8 p.m. You can register in my Instagram bio. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Hey, Lizzie here. I've helped dozens of postpartum moms just like you to manage their postpartum anxiety and deconstruct their postpartum depression. It's really easy for me. So if you're ready to feel better, I know the way. Let's chat on the phone. Set up a time by going to lizzylangston.com forward slash consult. It's pretty simple and I will be calling you soon.